Good afternoon, everyone. I am JP Garganera from Alianza Tigilmina, or the Alliance to Stop Mining from the Philippines. I am honored to join this panel as part of the Silver Anniversary Celebrations of Mining Watch Canada. I'm sorry that I am unable to join you physically. Nevertheless, I am thrilled to be making this contribution. I am giving this sharing using the perspective of ATM as a national coalition and present the experiences that proven helpful and added value to our work at the national, local, and international levels in our campaign against destructive mining. I will do this by answering four key questions. And in answering each question, I will include my reflections on the role or contributions of Mining Watch Canada to our work. These key questions are, what are global or international solidarity movements against destructive mining? Why are they important? What worked and what needs to improve? And what can we look forward to? So what are these global solidarity movements? Well, I found these descriptions very helpful in the course of our work. First is that groups and individuals coming together from different countries and different countries or locations who agree to work together to challenge or oppose mining projects and policies. They can be thematic or sectoral in nature or a combination. Thematic can cover conservation, deep sea mining, human rights, climate justice, transparency in mining, or sectoral can cover the sectors of women, indigenous peoples, youth, etc. But most often, they are a combination of both. So, so most global solidarity movements against mining are multi-sectoral and cross-cutting thematically. They can be purely anti-mining or broader in scope, such as uh, covering the work of anti-extractivism. The, the intent to work together uh, forging a common agenda dedicated to coordinate various aspects of our work to cover a larger geographic area. And most of these movements could be formal or informal. In, our, in my experience, Mining Watch Canada has been ATM's focal point in Canadian involvement in mining. So the agreement to work together has been what does Mining Watch Canada contribute to make sure that our campaign and advocacy work is targeted and effective? And along these lines, Mining Watch Canada has contributed in information about Canadian mining corporations, Canadian policies that influence mining projects here and in Asia, Canadian standards on mining that are being uh, sold to different governments, Canadian policies on human rights. More importantly, this coordination and complementation of work uh, was reflected in various engagements between ATM and Mining Watch Canada, where Mining Watch Canada was a direct source of information and support for our regional and global involvements in anti-mining campaigns. So some examples of this global solidarity, I'm not going to enumerate all of them. Most of you might be familiar with them. Now, let me share my reflection on where does Mining Watch Canada locate themselves in and how do they contribute? How do you contribute as Mining Watch Canada to our work in these platforms? Um, I think the significant added value of Mining Watch Canada comes in several assets um aspects number one you provide co-organizing function uh, at the regional or global level you are a co-organizer of many of these global platforms also you contacted and encourage your partners to participate or contribute in the formation or actual conduct of these events third you have provided 
direct capacity building. And you've done this several ways by hosting learning sessions, side events, or strategic meeting, or co-authoring some research or poster with us here. In some instances, Mining Watch Canada has provided direct funding or acted as co-funder or as fiscal sponsor to several organizations so that they can effectively participate in these mechanisms. I know that Mining Watch Canada has functioned as a steering committee member, as an advisory committee member in some of these platforms. Two, two platforms stand out for me here. One is on the Oceana Gold Out Now. Uh, and then the number 12, COVID and Mining Working Group, where uh, Mining Watch Canada was instrumental for coordinating the production and publication of global, regional, and national reports on the impacts of COVID uh, to the mining industry and to our mine, anti-mining campaign. Finally, very distinct contribution of Mining Watch Canada is the production or completion of direct research or you have contributed inputs to research and our publication projects. There are several. Uh, one of the recent ones are 10, 10 reasons why Ushana Gold should leave the Philippines, and that has been instrumental in our work, but I, I suppose also to the Out Ushana Gold campaign. So why are these global movements important or significant to our work? Now, ATM has a, a strategy on our international track of the campaign. This was developed in 2010 and updated in 2018. Some of the insights of our local members or the sites of struggles are very relevant to this day. Um, and so it's important that we continue nurturing these global movements. Let me cite three reasons. First, being part of a global movement provides a direct link for local communities to seek out the main actors behind the mining investment in their, uh, from the host countries. So the monstrous corporations are not faceless anymore. And mining, in the name of development, raises the important question when we know who are the mining investors and the mining owners. Development for whom? Certainly, when we dig deeper, it is not development for us or for our country. And this only happens because we have that international connection. So that quote on top, we know the people ultimately behind the mining project and benefiting from the minerals are mostly not our countrymen. Second, being part of a global movement gives a broader perspective among activists on the scope and breadth of the mining industry we are confronting, including that complex relationship between our governments and the mining industry. And so you have that quote on the lower right. This mining project is part of a bigger problem and we don't understand it completely. But when you are part of a global movement, then pieces tend to fall and you get a bigger picture and a, and a bigger perspective. Finally, being part of a global movement provides much-needed incentive and motivation, this building of solidarity among communities, you know, to continue inspiring and nurturing activism and to continue the resistance. And, and this final quote is very relevant for us. We are glad to realize that we are not alone from our faraway islands in fighting the mining project. That is a very powerful incentive for many of our communities. So what worked and what needs to improve? These are some of my personal reflections. These are observations from my direct experience in being part of various regional and global anti-mining campaigns. Not all of them may be present in every global movement, but certainly many of these movements benefited or suffered at one time or another with these descriptions that I'm going to uh, show. L let me just walk through them. Uh, what worked? In my experience, having a clear basis of unity and action agenda, having a core group of individuals that follow up this action agenda, a system of communication, you know, just to sustain who's going to do what, um, a regularity of interaction among the core group and the general members. 
There has to be a continuing learning, a skill share, and a building of capacities. And then I think number six is a very crucial. There has to be actual joint campaigns so that actual action is happening and people get associate themselves with, with concrete actions. And if there's a common target, that's also very helpful. Are we going to go against Oceana Gold for a specific time? And then after a different time, we go after a separate mining. Or are we going to target a UN mechanism for our campaigns and then define our coming together from that uh, target? However, the other side of the coin is there are a lot of things that we can improve in in strengthening global movements. Number one, we have to sustain that initial high energy of any coalition after the first year. After the first year, the energy I think it dives down. In this age of information, we have to be conscious of our digital presence and branding and how different countries and communities contribute in that digital presence and branding. We have to be responsive to the security threats, risk, and vulnerability. Otherwise, literally, our local community leaders get lost. Sometimes they get afraid. Many of them are tired. Some of them are hungry. Some of them actually get killed, which is a sad fact. Number four, we have to secure funds and other resources. Otherwise, there's no, no nothing will propel that movement forward. And then... I think we have to establish clearly the specific contribution of a global movement to actual local victory. We have to recognize, claim, and celebrate these local victories and identify what is the contribution of the global movement or international campaign to this local victory. Very much happy if it's actually a global victory. Finally, let me offer these suggestions on what we can look forward uh, to. Uh, for Mining Watch Canada, I suggest the following uh, elements. First, you can continue to be providing knowledge, information, and access to data about Canadian mining and its role at the regional and international levels. Second, you can continue sharing your expertise and technical assistance to local and national campaign platforms. At the same time, supporting regional platforms, especially I think in Southeast Asia, uh, where we do have a dearth of knowledge and access to Canadian mining companies. Third, I think Mining Watch Canada can expand further on its role of being a face and a voice to affected communities in Canada, while in Canada, you will be the face and voice of affected communities. On one hand, against Canadian mining companies that are hosted in Canada, or at the global level, you would be you can be the face and voice of affected communities against Canadian mining transnational corporations. Or you could be playing a, a solidifying role or a consolidating role against Canadian mining transnational corporations. And number four, I think Mining Watch Canada has this unique role to contribute to global debates and policy formulation, especially alongside, along the lines of Canadian mining interests. So transition minerals, deep sea mining, and on the other hand, what does Canadian law and Canadian commitments to global uh, standards on shrinking space for environmental rights defenders, indigenous rights, women's rights, and, and other uh, human rights commitments. Thank you very much for giving me the time. I am deeply honored to be part of this concert, uh, panel. And congratulations again to Mining Watch Canada. We are looking forward to the next 25 years of productive and meaningful engagement to Mining Watch Canada. Maraming salamat po and padayon.